we are going to go over the naming rules for covalent compounds, coordinate covalent compounds. So we start off with the traditional rule that the positive ion, the cation, is named for the anion. In our complex ion, we're going to name the ligands before the metal ion. Somewhere down there, but uh, when we name the metal ion, we give the oxidation number of the metal ion after the name of the metal ion. Uh, we'll cover uh, the names of the ligands in a moment, uh, but um, a lot of the ligands are going to end up with a uh, O suffix. Uh, so fluoride becomes fluoro, chloride becomes fluoro, iodide becomes ido. So we'll cover those uh, in a moment. We have a couple um, special names for uh, our neutral compounds like water or aqua. Ammonia is amine. Um, methylamine is still methylamine. Uh, carbon. Monoxide is carbonyl, uh, and nitric oxide, uh, NO, is nitrosyl. Uh, we use prefixes to show how many ligands are present, di, ti, di, tri, tetra, penta. However, if those prefixes are used in the name of the ligand, then we switch over to uh, bis, tris, tetricus. Um, we're going to use Roman numeral when we're designating the uh, charge of the metal ion. Uh, we name our ligands alphabetically, uh, not including prefixes. And uh, if the complex ion is negative, we're going to change the ending of the metal to an eight. And uh, we often use the Latin name uh, in that process also for the metal. So looking at uh, ligands, our um, uh, bromide comes bromo, carbonate comes carbonato, chloride comes fluoro, cyanide comes cyano, and then cyanide can um, uh, attach on, has two different donor atoms, carbon or nitrogen. Carbon is the typical one, so that's cyano. If it flips around where nitrogen becomes a donor atom, it becomes isocyano. Fluoride is fluoro, uh, glycinate, glycinato, uh, uh, that's one of our uh, amino acids. Hydroxide becomes hydroxo, oxalate becomes oxalato. Thiocyanate becomes thiocyanato. And this is uh, the more typical arrangement with the donor atom being sulfur. And if nitrogen becomes the donor atom, then it becomes uh, Isothiocyanato. Nitrite becomes nitro, and that is the typical arrangement with the uh, nitrogen be being the donor atom. If it flips around and oxygen is the donor atom, it becomes nitrito. Uh, ammonia is amine, water is an aqua, carbon monoxide is carbonyl, and ethylene diamine is ethylene diamine. So let's uh, go through some of these, uh, both directions from formula to name, from name to formula. So in naming these, we're going to have to know the ionic charge of the metal. So let's uh, figure out the charge first before we bother naming it. So the Oxalate is a negative two charge, so that's a total of negative six. We're going to take away three of them with our plus three. So we need one more plus three. So we have a plus three on that iron. So 
We're going to start with the positive ions, sodium. Then we start with our uh, ligands first. So we have three of them, so it's a trioxalato. Then we're going to do the, the iron, but we're dealing with the negative ion here. So instead of doing iron three, we're going to do fair eight for the negative ion, fair eight three. So sodium trioxalato ferrate three. So the next one down, let's figure out this charge. The ammonia is neutral. So we have a two negative, so we need a two positive for our cobalt. So we have a three, a six ammonia, so that's a hexa for six, amine for ammonia. So we have our hexa amine. Uh, cobalt two, chloride, and you see we don't say how many sodiums we have or how many chlorides we have. We don't specify number of counter ions. We can figure that out from the charges that are present in the metal and the ligands. So on the next one, the ethylene diamine is neutral. We have two negative charges plus one more negative charge. With three negative charges, we need a plus three charge on this. So we have a ethylene diamine um, starting with an E, and we have a nitroso starting with an N. So the ethylene diamine is going from first. Ethylene diamine. We have a di built into it. So we're going to use bis to show that there's two of them. So we have a bis ethylene diamine. We have uh, two nitrosos. So that's the di nitroso. We have an iron with a three. And then a chloride as a counter ion. Okay, let's go in the other direction from name to formula. So sodium is um, our cation here. We don't know how many yet. We have a zinc as the metal here. We have four tetrahydroxo hydroxo hydroxides. So now we figure out the charge. We have a four negative from the hydroxide. We're not given the um, a charge on the zinc. And we don't need to because we know that zinc is always a plus two. So we have a four negative plus two. We need another plus two. So we need a subscript two on that sodium. Okay. Um, so this one's a ion, not a neutral compound, so no counter ion in this. So we have um, the iron in there, Fe, penta aqua, so five waters. Hydroxo, so we have a hydroxide. Now we just have to figure out the charge on this. So the iron's a plus three. Water is neutral. We have one negative one canceling off one of the positive charges. So we have a two positive charge left on that. Okay. 
Okay, so we have um, uh, ruthenium as our metal. We have three waters. We have one carbonyl, one carbon monoxide. And we have a sulfate. Now we have to make sure we're having the right uh, subscripts to balance the ion with the counter ion. And uh, we have a plus two charge on the ruthenium. Water is neutral, carbon monoxide is neutral. So we have a plus two, a minus two. So this is neutrally charged right now. So that is the correct uh, formula for that. 